Good morning everyone. So today, we're going to discuss about Psychology of Personal Constructs by George Kelly. So overview of personal constructs theory. George Kelly's theory of personal constructs is like no other personality theory. It has been variously called cognitive theory, behavioral theory, an existential theory, and phenomenological theory. Yet, it is none of these. Perhaps the most appropriate term is metatheory, or a theory about theories. According to Kelly, all people anticipate events by the meanings of interpretations they place on those events. These meanings or interpretations are called constructs. People exit, exist in a real world, but their behavior is shaped by their gradually expanding interpretation or constru- construction of the world. According to personal construct theory, humans form personal conceptions about how the world works. People try to observe and to understand their own observations. The world and the events are the same to all people, but individuals respond differently to each event and experience. The distinctions between people stem from how individuals make sense of the events in their surroundings. A mental construct is a notion or idea that a person has in their mind. So for example, um, if one person believes that happiness is about how they feel in that moment, and someone else believes that true satisfaction comes from being grateful for the things they already have. So, they each have different personal mental constructs. The first person is more likely to act in a way that makes them feel good, while the second person is more likely to extra to extra care to be grateful. So this only means that uh, the personal personal construct theory on, uh, refers to, in a, in a simple words, is re- refers to the how an individual uh, understands or how individual um, interprets or perceive. The happenings on their surroundings. Okay, so we'll move forward to George Kelly's biography. So jo- George Kelly was a psychologist best known for his con- contributions to personal construct theory. This theory suggests that each person has their own mental framework from which they see the world. People develop their own constructs or schemas that they th- then use to interpret information and experiences. Kelly is commonly referred to as the founder of cognitive clinical psychology. He played a role in the early development of the field of cognitive psychology. So, George Kelly's early life, he was born near Perth, Kansas in 1905. His parents, Theodore Vincent Kelly and Elfleda Miriam Kelly, were were farmers. During much of his early life, Kelly's education was limited to teachings from his parents. He did not receive any formal education until 1918 when he attended school in Wichita, Kansas. At the age of 16, he started attending Friends University and began taking college courses. Kelly never graduated high school but went on to earn his bachelor's degree in 1926, majoring in mathematics and physics. So, Kelly initially planned on a career in engineering but abandoned that idea in favor of studying educational sociology at the University of Kansas. Before completing his master's, however, he left to enroll at the University of Minnesota. He had to withdraw from school when he found himself unable to pay tuition. In 1927, he found a position teaching psychology at Sheldon Junior College in Iowa. In 1931, Kelly completed his Ph.D. in psychology from the University of Iowa. So moving forward to George Kelly's career. So Kelly began teaching at the Fort Hayes, Kansas State College in 1931. In the midst of the Great Depression, Kelly started applying his knowledge towards something he found useful, evaluating school children and adults, and developing his landmark theory. During this time, He also established a traveling clinic that offered psychological services to people throughout the the state of Kansas. Working to serve people who had been hard hard hit by the economic upheaval of that time. Next is Kelly's philosophical position. 
Is human behavior based on reality or on people's perception of reality? George Kelly did not accept Skinner's position that behavior is shaped by the environment. That is reality. On the other hand, he also rejects extreme phenomenology which holds that the only reality is people perceive. Personal construct theory does not try to explain nature, rather it is the theory of people's construction of events that is their personal inquiry into the world. Next is person as scientist. According to Kelly, it is more important to know what a person might have done, and he believed that people act as scientists, testing their constructs in order to become better at predicting and controlling their lives. So what does person as scientist means? So, this means when you decide what foods to eat for lunch, what television shows to watch, or what occupation to enter, you are acting in much the same manner as scientists. That is, you ask questions, formulate hypotheses, test them, draw conclusions, and try to predict future events. Like 11 other people, your perception of reality is colored by your personal constructs, your way of looking at, explaining, and interpreting events in your world. Next is scientist as person. If people can be seen as scientists, the scientist can also be seen as people. Therefore, the pr pronouncements of scientists should be regarded with the same skepticism with which we view behavior. Next is cons constructive alternativism. Kelly begins by challenging the role that psychologists have given themselves. Psychologists regard themselves as scientists who conduct systematic studies of human behavior and thought. Kelly wonders why psychologists don't apply the same perspective to everyone. Doesn't everyone want to predict and control the course of their lives? According to Kelly, it, isn't it true that everyone has their own theories about life's situations? That this test their own hypothesis and that they weigh the experimental ev evidence gained through experience. So Kelly began with the assumption that the universe really exists and that it functions as an integral unit with all its parts interacting, interacting precisely with each other. Moreover, the universe is constantly changing, so something is happening. Added to these basic assumptions is the notion that people's thoughts also really exist and that people strive to make sense out of their continuously changing world. So different people construe reality in different ways, and the same person is capable of changing his or her view of the world.